Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So a while ago I made a video talking about 7 game dev mistakes that destroy your games. It's an interesting video talking about 7 common mistakes. And in that video there was a comment that talks about a very important topic that isn't usually talked about. In general it is on the topic of whether you'd like to make games as a profession or as a hobby. Both options are perfectly valid, there's no right or wrong answer. You can make games to try to make a living from them. But also, you can make them just for fun. There's nothing wrong with spending time or money in something that you do just for fun. Personally, I can tell you that I've been making a living as a professional indie dev for 10 years now. It's how I pay my rent and all my bills. But I also have hobbies in which I have absolutely no interest of turning into a job or making any money. It's things that I do just for fun and personal satisfaction. So let me just very clearly say, you can make games just for fun. You can make games just for personal enjoyment. You can definitely have a regular 9 to 5 job that pays the bills. And then on the evenings and on the weekends, just build some toys for you to play with. That is always a perfectly valid option. If you look at the Steam new release list, you can see all of these games that don't even have 10 reviews, which really means they didn't even sell something like 100 copies. If the only goal of making games was making money, if so, then all of these would be failures. But that is not necessarily the case. You are the only one who defines what success means to you. Really, just you and you alone. So for all of these, perhaps for some of these people, just finishing a game was their goal, and in that case, all of these are successful games. And perhaps for others, they just wanted to make a game that they themselves wanted to play, maybe by themselves or with some friends. So in that case, even selling zero copies would still make it a success. So I really just wanted to very quickly clarify this. Success is up to you to define it. If your goal is to make a living from your games, then that's fine, go ahead and chase that goal. But if your goal is just to make games for fun, then that is also a perfectly valid goal. So go ahead and do that. Just focus on enjoying yourself and don't worry about money. Like I said, my example, I've been lifting for 7 years, I've never made any money from it, nor do I intend to. I have no intention of becoming a fitness influencer like Will Tennyson. I'm not trying to become a pro powerlifter like Larry Wheels. And I'm not trying to become a pro bodybuilder like Chris Bumstead. It's really just a hobby, it's something that I do just for enjoyment. That's really the only goal that I define for myself for that hobby. So just know that it is perfectly okay to do game dev just for fun. But anyways, moving on. So here is the comment. I removed the name just because I don't want this video to come across as some kind of personal attack. That's really not my intention. This is not the first comment that I've seen on this topic. I've seen plenty of comments that share the same sentiment and this was just the perfect reason to use for this video. There's a lot to unpack here about making games as a hobby versus making as a job, as well as the pros and cons between paying for courses or learning everything for free, and difference between natural and learnability and whether it's possible to learn at all. So let's go through this really interesting comment point by point. So here the comment starts out by, let me help you guys with specifics that this video doesn't offer. You will never release a game and make meaningful amounts of money from it, and here is why. So right away, this starts off as seriously negative. Personally, I'm a big believer in education. Nowadays, I believe you can learn pretty much anything. The internet is a magical place, and if you have a connection to the internet, there's really nothing you can't learn. So I definitely do believe that anyone can learn how to make a game. When it comes to making money, that's obviously a bit more tricky, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. As for the reasons why it says it, number one, you lack natural, creative, and technical talent. And number two, it takes you too long to learn new things because of number one. Again, I'm a big believer in education and being able to learn anything you put your mind to it. And again, I'm going to talk about the money side in a little bit. But talking just in terms of technical skills, of course, natural talent can be a huge advantage. I believe natural talent is pretty much a multiplier. It's how things can be super easy to one person and quite a bit more difficult for another person. Growing up, I loved watching Naruto. And my favorite character was Rock Lee. So quick summary if you haven't seen it. Basically, this world has ninjas who can do ninjutsu. It's pretty much magic. And some ninjas, like Sasuke, they are naturally gifted and can do impressive things really easily. But then you have Rock Lee, who was born with no chakra and literally cannot do ninjutsu. But he still wanted to prove that he could compete with the others. So he focused super hard on just learning martial arts. His whole character is about hard work and how you can push it to the max even if you have absolutely no natural ability. And if you do put in the effort, you too can be a top tier ninja. Now that's obviously fiction, but I believe that the same concept applies in the real world. Yes, if you are born with a natural talent for programming, art, design, or really whatever, if so, then learning something and improving those skills will come much easier than to someone else. But at the same time, I generally believe that even without any natural talent at all, without it, if you really want to learn, you can still learn how to make awesome games. I truly believe that anyone can learn as long as they have the desire to learn. Anyway, so continuing this comment, you won't be stuck in this endless loop forever, the frustration you feel right now will only get worse. Right away, this is actually really strange, and again, it's not something just from this comment, it's something that I've seen quite a lot. It is strange, this sentiment of how frustration is essentially a bad thing, it, how it essentially means that you're doing something wrong. 
When I see these kinds of comments, I truly wonder, do these people think that I learn everything without any frustration whatsoever? Do people look at me and think that I've never been frustrated trying to learn something? If so, if that's how you think, then I can tell you that is not true. This kind of frustration, finding errors, mistakes, and so on, that is all part of the natural learning process. Personally, I've definitely felt frustration just like you. I've definitely had code that found tons of errors and things that took me quite a while to fix. Literally, just like anyone who tries to learn anything, finding errors, finding problems, and having to go through them, that is really just a perfectly normal part of learning anything. The only trick is simply to accept it and move on, meaning don't let that frustration stop you, just accept it as a normal part of the learning process and move on. Continuing, solutions spend no money on learning or software, because game dev will be nothing more than a hobby for you. Now, in general, I absolutely agree that spending money is optional, although I also disagree with the premise that spending money on a hobby is a bad thing. I've certainly spent quite a lot of money on my hobbies, but spending money is definitely an optional thing. It is not a requirement. Like I said, there's a near infinite amount of learning content at your fingertips. You absolutely do not need to spend any money to learn game dev. I've made a really interesting video quite a while ago where I talked about the pros and cons of paid courses versus free tutorials, and how when you buy a course, you're really mostly just paying for convenience. There's really no secret knowledge hidden in any paid course that you can find anywhere else. You can learn game dev entirely just from free tutorials, or really just by yourself by trial and error, or even from some free courses. For example, I have my own course that I made completely for free, and I did make an optional paid version of that course for the people who do want to support, but the content is all exactly the same. I did not make the free course intentionally bad because it's free or anything. It's on the exact same level of quality as my other paid courses. Same thing for all the free tutorials on this channel. Every tutorial that I make is with the highest quality that I can make, with the highest quality code and general practices, just like I do in my Steam games. In fact, for some recent tutorials that I did, it quite literally contains the exact same class that I used in my game, Dinky Guardians. So basically all of this to say that paid courses do not have any special hidden knowledge. You're mostly just paying for convenience since it's actually easier to follow a guided path as opposed to trying to learn from tons of completely separate tutorials. So courses do have their benefits, but you can absolutely learn everything for free. Continuing the comment, if it wasn't for course sellers and hugbox YouTubers, not sure what that means, nobody would be holding your hand and telling you what you want to hear. They tell you positive this and that for one reason, to sell you things. So again, I definitely do sell courses. Courses and affiliate links, it's part of how I make my living. Without paid courses, this channel would pretty much not exist. Just in case you don't know about YouTube tutorials, they really don't make any money at all. A tutorial can take anywhere from 20 to 100 hours to make, and the end result on a decently sized channel like mine is something like 10k views, and usually my RPM is about $2, so 10k views equals just about 20 bucks. So that means that based on YouTube ads alone, YouTube only pays me about a buck an hour to make tutorials. Even living on a low cost living country, that is really not enough to live on. So this comment is definitely right in the sense that I need to sell a course in order to keep this channel alive. However, what I certainly don't do is tell you lies about how if you take my courses, you won't be able to become a professional game developer and make a living from your games. In fact, I constantly talk about how this is an extremely tough business. I've made several videos on marketing and just how difficult the whole indie game market is. So what I do promise is that in my courses, I will teach you how to make games. I will teach you the technical part about how to write code and build systems to build a complete game. Like I said, I truly believe anyone can learn. But I cannot promise that if you take my course, you won't sell 10,000 copies and make a living from your games. No one can really promise you that. I just recently released my ninth Steam game. And with all my skills, with all my experience, and how hard I worked on it, even with all of that, I could not guarantee that it would become a success. All my skills, all my effort, that really just increased the odds of finding success, but it does not guarantee it. Now, thankfully, it was successful. I did manage to hit my goals, but this is a really tricky business. It could have definitely gone the other way. So if I cannot absolutely guarantee success in my own games, then I certainly cannot promise that I can teach you how to make your games be successful. I can teach you what I know and hopefully increase the odds of you finding success, but I really cannot 100% guarantee it. If someone is promising to teach you some kind of secret knowledge to guarantee that your games make six figures, if so, then yes, they are really just saying that in order to sell you courses, and yep, that is definitely absolutely wrong. Then the comment points out some timelines. So here is a good gauge on how to tell if you have a shred of talent to create lucrative games that your players will love. So learning C-sharp to intermediate, two to three weeks, Unity UI, one week, Unity scripting, two weeks, and so on. Now, my only comment on this is everyone learns in different ways. Everyone has a different pace, so I really disagree with these kinds of fixed timelines. Going back to the whole thing about talent, sure, some people will have a much easier time learning something, but if the end goal is gaining some knowledge, then I feel that the timeline shouldn't really matter much. If it takes you one month to learn something that someone else learned in a week, does that really matter? At the end of the day, you did acquire that knowledge. So regardless of how long it took you, I would say that is a huge success. And then the final portion of this comment, you are going to have to learn multiple full-on professions to make a lucrative game. 
Most people can barely learn to be semi-good at one profession over a period of 5 to 10 years. This is why developers slash artists that work for game studios never launch their own games. Remember, it is a talent and skill arms race. The user expectation in 23 is incredibly high. Don't let accidents like Gorilla Tag make you think you have hope. You don't. So on this, yep, I do agree that game dev is extremely difficult. You need to be really good in a ton of different areas in order to make a good game. It's really insane just how many disciplines are involved in making a good game and how as a solo dev you really need to be good at pretty much all of them. It's really a very unique activity that has some really intense requirements while also being really tricky to find success. So game development is definitely very strange. I definitely do agree that it is very difficult to make a lucrative game. But with all that said, now let me address the main topic contained in this comment, which is really the idea that game dev is only about making money and nothing else. Like I said in my reply, making money is not the only reason to become a game dev. If your goal is to make money, then there's a million other things you can do that are far easier. Just go write some boring bank software and you will make a ton more money than as an indie dev. But if you like making games, then go ahead and make games regardless of financial outcome. If your goal is simply making money, then yeah, you're much better off going off into different industries. You can just Google jobs for game devs and regular software engineers, and you will very quickly see how the pay is quite different. Not to mention how game dev usually involves tons of crunch. Whereas if you're writing some general boring bank software, you can be pretty confident that you're going to have a stable job working something like 40 hours a week. So yes, if your goal is solely money and nothing else, then definitely my advice is do not get into game dev. Especially not indie game dev. Most indie games on Steam don't even make $1,000. However, if you like making games, if so, then I would say go ahead and make games regardless of financial outcome. Personally, I find that making games is a lot of fun. Building systems is really fun. Taking some mechanic from some game you enjoy and building it your way, personally I find that to be a lot of fun. So you can absolutely do game dev just as a hobby, just for fun. You can absolutely have a regular day job where you make some decent money and pay for your life. And then on the weekends or on the evenings, you can just work on your games just like you do on any other hobby. That is 100% a valid way of living your life. Personally, I love fitness, I love working out, I go to the gym every single day and I spend at least an hour and a half there. However, I have absolutely no intention of turning that into a job or making any money. I have no desire of becoming a pro bodybuilder like Chris Bump said, or a pro power lifter like Larry Wheels. That is not my goal at all. That is not why I do it. I do it simply for fun and for personal satisfaction. I enjoy the journey of getting a tiny bit better every single day. That's really it. I have no intention of making a single cent from any of the time that I spend at the gym. And I certainly don't consider that to be a waste of time. I don't consider it to be a waste of activity just because it doesn't make me any money. Again, that is not the goal. Also, there is nothing wrong with spending money in the hobby if you want. Personally, I've spent thousands of dollars on protein and creatine. I've bought all kinds of gym equipment, shoes for running. I've bought gloves, belts, shirts, and so on. Or really just paying my gym membership every single month for over 10 years. I spent a lot of money on this hobby and I did it gladly. I've also spent thousands of hours watching fitness YouTube videos to learn all about it. Again, none of this time was spent with the intention of making any money. Same thing for electronics. I've got tons of Arduinos and Raspberry Pis all over the place. Lots of random electronic stuff that I bought to make some projects just for fun. I've also got a basic 3D printer that I bought to make a bunch of random stuff. I certainly don't regret any of the money or time that I spent on any of these hobbies. They were never intended to make money. Just to have fun and get some enjoyment, which I did get. So yes, making money from games is extremely difficult nowadays. And yes, most people will fail to make money. Especially indie devs, and especially if you are not actively trying to find success. It is possible, I've done it myself several times. It is extremely difficult, but it is possible. So if that's what you want to do, then I would say definitely go ahead and try doing that. But always remember there's more to life than money. If you want to make games for fun, then just make games for fun. In this, there's really no right or wrong answer. You can try making games to make a profit if that's what you want, or you can make games just for fun. Just like you can spend some money or you can spend no money at all. You can do it all yourself, or you can buy some assets and courses to help you on your hobby. On this topic, there are really no wrong answers. You can do whatever you want to do. So hopefully this video serves as a way for some of you to do some kind of introspection and ask yourself what do you really want out of game dev? What exactly are your goals? If your goal is to do game dev as a hobby, then treat it as a hobby. Do it just for fun, enjoy it, and don't get frustrated with lack of sales or wishlists. On the other hand, if your goal is to make this as a job, if so, then treat it like you would any other professional effort. Meaning, take marketing seriously, learn from the pros, and invest time and money just like you would in any profession. Importantly, is both are perfectly valid options. So just take some time to figure out what option you're going for and go do it.